We've just been talking about prejudices and got to the delicate point of what some of our own prejudices are. Will you face up to any need? Have you got any prejudices? Well, uh, basically, our prejudices against those who, who are prejudiced against me. But uh, apart from that, lately I've, quite, I've acquired a strong feeling of nationalism. I'm very much interested in the total liberation of Africa. So that uh, when I see some people who say that, uh, well, most African states aren't ripe for independence, well, I, I, I have a strong ill feeling towards them. Well, I think that uh, prejudice is a part of human nature. And uh, as a result, I am prejudiced too, and I admit that. However, uh, I don't think that prejudice is necessarily based on, on a biased opinion, um, on ignorance. But I think that uh, prejudice is also uh, based on knowledge and on experience. For example, I, uh, I lived in Tanganyika for uh, quite a few years, and uh, I'm prejudiced uh, against uh, Africans, uh, not because of their color, but because of, their, uh, because of the difference in the cultural and economic status. Uh, their living standards are so low, uh, their housing and uh, uh, clothing facilities, their income, and on the whole, their attitudes of life are so different that, I mean, it's natural for me to be prejudiced. And I'm prejudiced against people who are prejudiced, although uh, <laughs> I, I recently realized this, and I think, I think I'm trying to overcome it by searching deeper and trying to find out why people are prejudiced and why they have feelings against another person, and then to go from there and, and discuss the idea and argue the uh, point rather than the person, and not to be prejudiced against the person, but to disagree with their um, this one idea that they have. <laughs> well, I looked up prejudice in the dictionary to see uh, what my prejudices are, and found that prejudice is a preconceived idea based on ignorance. Well, according to that definition, I have millions of prejudices because 18 years old and with a very limited scope of experience, naturally, I am prejudiced against lots of things. But actually, I think quite a lot of what is process for prejudice today is not so much that as a bias, which is very often, as Gus said, comes not with ignorance, but with contact. And uh, I am prejudiced. I think, like most other people, against everything which I think threatens the things which I hold dear to myself and to people like myself. Well, Gus, you say that uh, you are prejudiced against uh, Africans in Tanganyika, not because of their color, but uh, because of their economic and social position. Exactly. Well, in the same way, are you prejudiced against uh, Europeans or white men who, who are in a lower class or in a bad economic situation? Well, uh, to some extent, yes. but. Uh, it's not only a matter of prejudice, it's a matter of preference. Uh, I wouldn't like to associate with, uh, with uh, an African or with a white person whose uh, living standards are low, not just because his living standards are low, but just because, I mean, uh, conditions are such. It's not, I don't think it's just a, a matter of, uh, uh, of prejudice, but uh, I think it's a kind of natural reaction of every human being. Well, um, coming to the United States, I had the idea that, or that was the idea given to me by uh, magazines, American magazines, and uh, articles in American newspapers, that Americans have very strong uh, racial prejudices. And what struck me was the fact that the most prejudiced people in America are people sitting in their homes be in beautiful segregated areas, going to often private schools where there are no Negroes, people who have never met a Negro on equal social standing and then uh, form uh, from, uh, well, their own uh, philanthropic ideas, the idea that all Southerners are rather backward and quite inferior to themselves and people who scoffing at the Southerners problem and scoffing at problems in South Africa, whereas they know absolutely nothing about it. And that is to me a form of prejudice. Uh, I think uh uh, we've got to consider this question of race relations in both South Africa and America. First of all, I think there's a basic difference between the two problems because uh, if we take the case of America, the Negroes were brought over against their will. So well, we may consider them as foreign to the land. At any rate, uh, if they are foreign to the land, of course, when you go to a place and you find con conditions unsuitable, uh, most probably you will leave, you quit the place. But in their case, well, they were brought against their will. 
And so that's different in itself. And then when we go to South Africa, we have the Negroes stay in their place and the whites coming over. Well, actually, I don't think that is quite fair, me, if you consider the fact that the um, Negroes, or rather they are not Negroes, but Bantu in South Africa, had been arriving in South Africa at more or less the same time that the uh, Europeans came in, uh, who were, I must make this point very clearly, not colonists. The first whites who came to South Africa came there to uh, establish a halfway station to the east. They had no intention of forming a colony, and then the people who were trekking north said in their manifesto that they sought a home for themselves and that they wished to remain in peaceful relations with tribes whom they found there. They did not wish to take away grand, uh, ground from them, but obtain that only by um, trade. And uh, therefore, I think my position as a South African is so far different from that of Gus, uh, who lived in Tanganyika for a long time, because uh, Gus has been telling me that uh, the Greeks realized, and all other people living in Tanganyika, that sooner or later uh, they will have to leave and give the country over to Africans. Isn't that true? Well, that's true. In Tanganyika, there are about uh, 8 million Africans and 25,000 Europeans. And uh, it's inevitable that when the Europeans and the, the white people on the whole are asked to leave Tanganyika, they'll just go out of it. I mean, because they don't insist it's their own country. Well, as you said, in South Africa, it's a different situation. Uh, the white people really believe that that is their own land and they will never uh, give it up. But, however, I don't think that that is um, a good reason for uh, a South African government to follow the policy which it follows now. Uh, I think that, uh, well, it's true that uh, the, the white claim that country, but uh, I don't think that the black people should be denied the right to vote, the right to live uh, uh, equally with the white people, the right... Uh, um, to own a house and um, to own well, land listen, or to uh, get an education. Uh, since we're apparently going on to South African uh, positions, I must uh, first make it clear that uh, I cannot discuss uh, South African racial relations uh, purely uh, as regards to the prejudice point of view because our problem is very largely an economic problem too. Now, but yes. but uh, even there, you were saying that uh, the first people who came over were just interested in trade. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, they came to meet indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And how did they treat no, them? No, no, they, they didn't come to meet them. They, they merely wanted to uh, grow their crops and supply that to ships. I, I know. They came to meet indigenous people in the land. Uh, well, the indigenous people there were still living in stone age conditions. They were not the Bantu. Marita? Yes? Um, I'd like to ask you, um, eventually, do you, do you hope for a world where uh, everyone can live together? Well, we are, um, I know, today in a very difficult position and much criticized by the rest of the world. Much of that critici uh, criticism is by no means unbased, although I still think that people are very uh, unsympathetic in their view on South Africa. Now, uh, we, uh, you ask whether we uh, hope for a world, where, uh, for a country where everybody can live peacefully together. Our policy is aimed at uh, territorial segregation. Yes, um, uh, we uh, hope that uh, that we can, um, in the first place, not have our own culture swamped. In the second place, not have the Negro living in our own communities as inferiors, o owing no capital, having a very little education in their own of the uh, um, corresponding with their own background. Wherefore, we wish to give them a position in which they will be able to uphold their own. Well, I understand this, except that uh, I don't understand if eventually, um, I know one of my wishes is, is that the world as a whole can live together peacefully. Mm -hmm. And in our own countries, if we are going to separate into different territories because of cultural differences, I don't see how we possibly can solve the problem of having um, one united world. Yes, but but you even Marita, I'm not going to be sympathetic with you here. Because, uh, well, at any rate, in the, uh, in the Union of South Africa, the, the, the Negroes haven't got any rights at all. There's racial discrimination. That is not and true. Uh, well, 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 that's true. You've got the apartheid policy. What is the aim mm -hmm. of the apartheid policy? The aim of apartheid policy is to give both the Europeans, uh, with the Europeans, I mean not Europeans, but uh, people of European extraction and the Negro a chance to live together peacefully and both contribute towards the development of their country. See, uh, I consider apartheid policy uh, as a system of uh, social, economic, 
political and rather uh, sexual separation right. based on the uh, uh, on the basis of race. Well, all right. Now, let's you say social, economic, uh, political, political sexual separation based on right. the. Uh, now, I say that in South Africa, we spend more per head per mm -hmm. year on educating and uh, giving medical facilities and giving um, general uh, facilities to our Negroes than is done in um, any other state and, and, and in Africa. Then, Would you say yes, uh, I'm sure that in South Africa, every white, white man gets more money per head from the local resources. So in actual fact, you get more from the local people than they get from you. Um, Marita, uh, the Supreme Court in the United States recently um, passed uh, a law saying that uh, separate but equal was not valid, that if you separate, even though you have better facilities or equal facilities, if there is a separation, it's not valid. And this is just It's for not equal, you're it's saying. It's not equal. And this is... Um, happen for our own country and I'd like to ask you as well as everyone else whether they feel this is true, whether separation can be equal in any sense of the word. Well, I'd like uh, to answer the question. Uh, conditions in America uh, are different. For example, in Tanganyika, we cannot have uh, uh, integrated education because the conditions are so different, especially the social conditions. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, the standards of living are so different and uh, the annual income of the Africans compared to the white people is so different that we can't possibly have but uh, if, uh, if people education. Aren't, people aren't uh, born more ignorant than one another, I mean, because of their color or their race. So if you start with their education and they are educated equally and in integrated uh, places, then the part of the so-called vicious circle will be ended because they will be able to have well, equal opportunities uh, that's afterwards. That's true, but how can I live uh, uh, with a person who still lives in a grass, uh, in a grass uh, hut no. and who still uh, uh, hunts lions with his spear and who still uh, uses his, uh, his wife uh, as a beast to well, work on his field? But that's, I, I very much education, that's why education... Let me well, get a word I very much agree with you, Cora, because uh, I don't see why we should have separation at all. If you have a good intention, there's no need for separation. Once you bring about the idea of separation, there's a, uh, there's a bad intention behind it. Yeah. Well, see, and, and the question is, when we go to the classroom, we don't go there... Well, when we go to the classroom, we go there to work with our mentality. Well, it doesn't depend on your background, whether you kill allowance with uh, guns or with spears. But you forget well, the economic considerations, me. Let well, us explain well, this well, to you. Okay. I mean, I know that there's a barrier, but we cannot expect immediate results in a few, um, in a generation or in a... Uh, in a limited uh, time, it needs thousands and thousands of years. Just imagine man Stop. passed from uh, from uh, the Stone Age to the Nuclear Age uh, after thousands and thousands of years. So we can't uh, expect immediate results. For example, Negroes here, here in America emerged from slavery. Gradually, they started uh, getting rights. Uh, they started playing games. They started but it didn't singing. take a thousand years. But you said it would take thousands and thousands of years. Oh, I don't but well, look at the problems you but still have, Cora. Just yes. because well, but uh, uh, talking about these racial relations, ra racial relations, I think America is far also than South Africa. At any rate, I'm not using this difference to justify America's cause. But well, uh, uh, well, it is quite yes. true that, that America see, is against the law. At least in America, uh, it's against the law to discriminate against a person because of his color. Mm -hmm. In your case, it is rather considered lawful, isn't it? Uh, well, I must in the first place. <coughs> mention the fact that what makes the big difference between America and South Africa is the numbers. America has never been faced with a position of giving rights, giving integration, and then being immediately swamped themselves. What you seem to forget is that we have in South Africa uh, approximately 3 million, uh, out of, uh, out of uh, um, population of 14.5 million, mm -hmm. only uh, 3 million are of European descent. Well, I, I I'm criticizing South Africa, even not because of your form of government or so, but if you consider the fact that uh, South Africa is a member of the United Nations, mm -hmm. and you are supposed to believe in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. But let's see, let's see, let's take the question of the Negro in your country. Uh, he's socially segregated, Politically, he's inarticulate. He cannot speak. He cannot express his own opinions. He cannot vote. And then, moreover, he is separated from all the Marita? others. So, in actual fact, yes, well, that's a complete violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Well, let me explain to you our um, uh, policy mm -hmm. of apartheid. 
we are trying to um, segregate territorially the Bantu and the uh, person of European descent. Why? We have not, because as I've said before, we don't want our own culture to be swamped See? immediately. Now, just listen to me for uh -huh. a moment. We have put aside a part of our country, and we are adding to that. We will probably have to add to that, uh, which is reserved entirely for the Negro, in which the Negro's interest is still considered supreme. And we hope that we will in, uh, eventually have uh, a, a better balance between oh. Negro and European in European communities. And then, uh, uh, while we are doing a great deal to educate the Negro, we hope that he will be able to take up responsibility of self-government in his own community and eventually probably become independent. Well, well it, would be, it would eventually become two different states. Then. It would probably emerge as two independent and who would and, and you would have separate leaders of each state? Yes, we would. Well, uh, when you started this apartheid policy, you intended to have a complete uh, racial and social separation. Yes. But at the moment, you find that, uh, well, you, the white people depend on African labor. So the, the whole thing has become a system of partial separation. Yes, that yes. is quite true to me. Um, we have become economically integrated since the discovery of gold. Mm -hmm. And the position of uh, Bantu living in European communities today is very difficult. I must admit that you. They don't have equal. Uh, they don't have uh, equal um, pos uh, chances for obtaining in that particular community uh, a good position. What you would consider a good position. That is wh why we are hoping that they may, in their own territory, get what they can never get in our territories. You see, uh, I'm quite aware that this policy has not been a success because, well. Uh, initially, you intend that uh, it may somehow or the other give you a, a form of security mm -hmm. because you are a minority, ru ruling over a majority. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> personally, I believe that so far it has given you a false security because uh, whilst I believe that whilst the Negro is indigenous to Africa mm -hmm. and he is living in Africa, this policy of apartheid will never be practicable. And then... Uh, well, Okay, you're, uh, you're criticizing the South African policy in the South African way. Mm -hmm. but what about Tanganyika? Then? Uh, just tell us some of your opinions about the policy in Tanganyika. You uh, see, I'm totally, I'm totally against discrimination. You see, I don't find... In, in fact, it's foolish, no you see. Look, look, let's consider uh, you go to a store to buy shares. You've got the same type of shares in different colors. Does it mean uh, they are different in superiority but or different in quality? And me I mean, has already pointed out to you that this discrimination is not in the first place on color. Well, on Marisha, culture. then why are you going? Uh, I was just going to ask you that. If you say that this is on uh, culture and on education, as Gus said, then why? How can you separate it into two territories with white in one and black yes. in the other? Um, I've read a number of articles which say that. Uh, it cannot be proven that uh, whites are more intelligent, tel have more intelligence when they're born or intelligence quota than um, black. And there are people who uh, are doctors and lawyers and have high positions of learning and understanding, and I can't see how you can separate. Listen, uh, uh, Cora, you are uh, s uh, saying now something which is very reassuring to me as a South African, because we are, it is uh, in our self-interest to give the Bantu as much education and bring him up to a higher standard as soon as possible. And then so would that you associate so that, that he can but now listen, there is another point to that. A great many Bantu in South Africa have already become educated doctors and lawyers. But what do you has happened what with the, these now listen here, what has happened in and what uh, for instance India holds very much against Britain is that they have tried the same thing has happened in India and those people have become completely uh, superior to their own people. They had nothing to contribute to their own people. They didn't want to. We want those people to uh, still belong, uh, belong part of their own race, to be important to their own people, to be doctors and, and lawyers in their own people so that they do not find that you have this educated mass integrated into the European community while the uh, bigger masses are still remaining ignorant and illiterate and ha don't have the benefit of those people who are educated and who must become their leaders. Well, uh, first of all, I, I don't think you are being sincere enough. You, you initiated this policy of apartheid on the question of color, not on the question of the cultural differences between the well, two races. Well, how does one draw cultural, a cultural line? I've just been trying to explain that we don't want to separate the people of a higher culture mm -hmm. from those of a lower culture, because the moment they become separated, they have nothing to contribute to the people who, who, 
whose uh, leaders they must become and uh, to whom their own people must look up. Oh, don't in other words, uh, you are giving the outside world a picture that a picture that you are very much concerned about the African. Look, I don't think uh, talking about even their education. Recently, some time ago, you established what you call the Bant Bantu Education Act. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of that? Well, uh, let me explain this Bantu Education Act to you. Uh, well, you know about it. I'm talking to the other two. The Bantu Education Act was an act passed recently, which, uh, in effect, withdrew state support from schools uh, run by churches. Now, formerly, uh, there had been a great many Bantu schools, church schools, state schools, and um, yes, there were many church and state schools receiving uh, subsidies from the government. They were giving different um, courses. Uh, the church schools were um, educating people to become, um, uh, to uh, reach the highest education possible to them, and they were giving them uh, a specialized, more or less European education with the result that a great many of these people left the country. Me himself said that he had three people I in his school yes. teaching him. Uh. We don't want to lose those people. With the Bantu Education Act, we're trying to um, b uh, bring a general standard of education so that those people can help their own people and not leave the country. Look, the, the main question is, do you think, let's say, a person in their 12th grade in a Bantu school, in an mm -hmm. all-Negro school, works on the same syllabus as a person, a person in the 12th grade of a white school? Yes, the requirements for the final exam are the same. I, I assure you that uh, they are different because, uh, well, I have had the opportunity of being taught by a South African master in mm -hmm. my own school. And, well, he had to leave South Africa because of these reasons. He was teaching science and was working on a very compact syllabus. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to go outside the whole syllabus at all. And in actual fact, the whole idea was directed to give the Negro an inferior type of education. Uh, it is not an inferior type of education. We're trying to give them an, an education which will make them useful to their own people. If that is to your mind, an inferior <laughs> education, I pray to differ. <laughs> that is, you are very much concerned about the Negro. Well, we are, we, uh, uh, as I've said before, it is in our self-interest to do that. Because the, the sooner we can give them independence, the sooner we are sure that they are ready for that, the sooner we have them off our hands. Are you sure South Africa is willing to give independence to the Negroes? They will have to in time. Do you think we can keep that community without independence indefinitely? Of course we can't. But what is going to be very difficult is the number of Negroes who have, as you have pointed out, already been integrated. Because I think that, I mean, you must understand that the prejudice in South Africa, which is uh, very uh, general now and which is not becoming less, is based on contact in the first place with people uh, still in their, in their uh, tribal life. Uh, as Gus had said, that is very primitive. Yes. Uh, so naturally, uh, the feeling was that those people were inferior. But those people have in the meantime proven that they can become educated, they can become doctors and lawyers. And I believe that those people who remain in our own communities will uh, eventually find that the attitude towards them is changing. Marina, mm -hmm. you've told us what your uh, feeling about the future is. What's your feeling about the future in South Africa? Well, you see, I consider this whole problem is a very serious one. Uh, at the moment, this is one of the most crucial problems in the world facing confronting our generation. And in fact, it's second only to the problem of uh, war and peace. But unfortunately, it is very closely related to it. You see, the problem is very, very serious. First of all, in order to solve this problem, I believe that uh, <laughs> the white man must come to his senses. He must swallow his pride, you see. This whole thing is based on just foolish ideology. I mean, this question of color and using color uh, as a basis of uh, superiority or inferiority. You see, the whole thing is foolish and, well, either the white man follows his pride and avoids what is inevitable and tries to live with the Negro peacefully or, well, if, as I've said, the Negro is politically inarticulate, he doesn't uh, vote, he doesn't me, vote. Me, me, what, what, what uh, stand do you um, think that the South African government should take? Of course, you abolish your policy. I mean, if and, you, if and what follows then? And live peacefully, peacefully with the uh, Negroes. And live peacefully with the Negroes. Yes. And be completely look, smart, look, you see, lose uh, everything for which they had been fought, <laughs> as uh, be drawn down to the, uh, by the mere numbers, be swamped and lose their own culture. And you've forgotten that South Africa has become very important economically. We have quite a lot to offer the rest of Africa already. We've become the biggest exports of um, consumer goods towards other African states south of the Sahara? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I quite agree with you there, you see, but uh, 
Look at this point. The problem was brought about by the white man. You started to discriminate against the Negro. So, well, we depend on the white man to solve the problem. After all, the Negro is powerless in your community, in your society, the Negro is powerless. He hasn't got any political rights. In your own society, yes? You see, uh, the, alter the only alternative would be that uh, the Negro would take to violence. Uh, in Kenya, we had the same thing. When people took to, to violence, in, in, we took the form of the Mau Mau uh, organization. Well, uh, in Kenya, there's a difference in population, too. You, mustn't take that, uh, you must take that into consideration. There are uh, so many uh, Africans and mm -hmm. uh, there are so, many, so few uh, white people. But, and, uh, but, I'm but, sorry, but, this uh, is all the time we've got. We obviously must come back in another discussion to the question of the future in Africa, not only in South mm -hmm. Af Africa, but the tremendously revolutionary movements that are going on in Africa today, and we're going to have to come back to that in another discussion. I just thought, in the few seconds that are left, I ought to call the audience's attention to the fact that uh, quite a number of these discussions are being printed verbatim in scholastic magazines. Also, a scholastic teacher calls attention to it in the February 6th issue of scholastic magazines, for example. There is a verbatim report of this show you were on me. Wait, I've got the wrong... <laughs> where, are, where are we? Here we are. Uh, the show on the image of America abroad. There's <laughs> me right there. And uh, several of these will be printed verbatim in successive issues of Scholastic magazines. This one is the Senior Scholastic of February 6th. I think the next one that will be printed verbatim is on our discussion on education. But I promise you that we will have another discussion on the future in Africa. Until, yes? <laughs> Until next weekend, when we'll be talking about some aspects of colonialism, how one nation can help another, or how one nation tries too much to help another.